Hello and welcome back to the channel, Animated Alex here. I'm going to do something a bit different today on Learning Basic. Um, I'm going to make a ball bounce around the screen. So I'm going to write a, a quick program, as quick as I can anyway, just to demonstrate how to make a ball move bouncing across the screen. So let's start off by just setting our um, paper colour and our inks. 20, we shall let R equal 5, let C equal 16, let H equal 1, and I'll explain in a minute what these variables are for. So R and C, that is going to be our position, our coordinates for our um, character. And uh, for now, I'm just going to put a capital O to represent our ball. 40, I'm just going to put a pause in there, pause 100. And then 50, print at r-c space. There we go, 60. Now, V represents our vertical movement. So I'm going to put let V equal V and I'm going to put plus 0 0.2. 70 let R equal R plus V and then let C equal C plus H. So basically we've got our R coordinate, which is our vertical, is plusing our vertical variable, which equals 1. And I've asked it to let V equal V plus 0 0.2. You'll see why I've done that when we run the program. And then we've got let C, which is our horizontal, plus our horizontal variable, which is 1. 80. If C is less than 1, or C is more than 30. So that's just setting our perimeters to where I want the ball to bounce. Let H equal, whoops, we don't want it to plus, we want it to minus H. So our horizontal will basically minus H, which is 1. And we'll get it to do a beep, um, 0 0.0520. And for 90, I'm going to pull this one down. Just going to rearrange this for our vertical position. And it will be let V, our vertical, minus our vertical. And for that, we'll just do a different sound. I'll just change that 20 to 40. And 100, print at R, comma C, and another space. Oh no, not a space, sorry. We want our O again for our ball. And then 110, pause 5. And if I do 120, go to 50. Run. So there we go, we've got our ball bouncing around the screen and it will the program will stop in, stop in a minute when, I'll, um, when the ball gets out of range. There we go, out of screen. 
So line 60, where we've got v equal v plus 0 0.2, <coughs> that is the gravity factor, if you like. The addition of 0 0.2 to v means that the change in r minus the vertical position minus is no longer constant. It increases on each loop, speeding the ball up. When the ball hits the bottom of the screen, its direction is reversed and therefore v becomes a negative number, repeatedly decreasing the row number. So with line 60 being in there, it makes v less and less negative, slowing down the upward progress of the ball until its vertical motion ceases. v becomes positive again, and the ball begins to move downwards once again. So to progress on this, I've actually developed a small little game to show you what we could do with this. And I'll show you that now. So here we are. I've made a little game called Eight Ball Smash. And the idea is we've got to make sure that the eight ball hits our little um, red platform up the top there. And we have to hit all the blue blocks at the bottom. Very similar to the, um, is it breakout game? But I've done it upside down. I've done it the other way, just to be different. Oh, and if you miss, you have to start again. So to make that program, all I've done is obviously I've um, included some user-defined graphics. which are there from 320 onwards. We've got our user-defined graphics set up there. 380 is just a well done message if you manage to get rid of all of the blue squares. And I've added some blue blocks from line 90 onwards. 170, there's our little graphic there for our um, platform where the ball hits. So line 220, if ATTR, RC, so the attributes of our coordinates R and C, which is our eight ball, if it equals 57, so 57, that's white paper, times it by eight, that gives us 56, then add one for the blue ink, that gives us 57. So when it equals blue, then let score equal score. So I've used SC as our variable for score, plus one. And then let V equal minus V, so it returns with the bounce again. And we've got another ATTR at line 290. Just pull that down. And that's for when it um, the eight ball detects that it's hit red. So again, we've got our attributes of R minus one, so that it's just in front of the, the red platform. If that equals 58, so that's red, or the ATTR R-C equals 58. So if it gets directly onto the platform, basically on top of it, then it will also register it as well and return it with V equal minus V. I've also put or R is more than 20. So if it goes down the bottom of the screen and it goes more than 20, it will return back up again. So line 280, we've got let X equal X plus K strings, if it equals M, K strings being in keys, and it's less than 28, then it will move to the right. To get it to move to the left, we minus the K strings, if it equals Z, and it's more than zero, then it will go left. Our coordinates of our platform being Y and X. So there you go. As soon as you push the button, the platform appears and away we go.
painfully watch me play the game and mess it up. I've kind of done it the opposite way round to the norm of this style of game. Usually the platform's at the bottom. I've decided to be different and put it at the top of the screen. So every time the ball gets past the platform, which is on line, just trying to find out where that is. There it is, 300, line 300. So line 300 is where the eight ball goes past our platform and hits the green stripe that I've put there. If it, so if R equals one, then we've got a, a four next loop in there, which does the, uh, the beep sound. And then it just goes back to line 40, resets everything, and we start again. So there you go. And if you score 56, which is number 150, because there's 56 blocks. If you get all 56 blocks, it goes to 380. And like I said earlier, that's where the um, well done message is, just to say you've completed it. So on line 190, I've made the ball move slightly faster rather than it just go in one space. I've asked it to go uh, V times two. So that it gives that impression of it moving quicker. If I change that, say, to just V, you'll notice that the ball runs a lot slower. So just to make it a little bit more playable and a lot quicker, times it by two. And it's a lot. It's just a nicer speed. Makes it a bit more playable. So anyway, I hope this um, this little program has been helpful on how to make a ball bounce around the screen. And as you can see, I've created a little game by using that technique. Again, thank you for watching. Um, and I shall see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves now.